unexplained illnesses, irreversible trauma, and possible encounters with the paranormal. Horror stars should be convincing on screen, but how far is too far? It's hard enough to deal with the fundamental fear and discomfort that comes with filming a horror movie, but it's something else entirely to get so physically impacted that you end up in a hospital. That's what happened to Joey King on The Conjuring set, and the cause is still a mystery. King recalled the scary experience during an interview with People in 2022, saying, It was pretty intense. Some weird things happened on the set, along with the movie being scary. It's true, I developed this bizarre, rare, out-of-nowhere blood disorder, and basically, all the red platelets from my body were, like, drained. They were just gone. This experience was more than just an unexplained bruise or cut that could have occurred from a physical scene. King's condition was life-threatening, as doctors feared that she could have internal bleeding. The diagnosis required daily trips to the hospital both before and after filming. However, when she returned home from the shoot, there was no sign of the illness. Patrick Wilson told The Independent that King had even more strange occurrences on set, noting that children's scenes don't require stunts, but that she ended up with bruises that looked remarkably close to the ones King's on-screen mom has in the movie. Wilson kept silent on the issue at the time so as not to scare his 12-year-old co-star. The fifth installment to the Conjuring franchise, The Nun ups the chilling religious iconography to 11 and creates a truly terrifying backdrop for a slate of haunting encounters. As much as the movie made fans' spines tingle, actors Thaisa Farmiga and Demian Pachir were right there with them, except they had to live through it. Getting buried alive is a major fear for a lot of people, and Pachir had to live out that horror repeatedly while filming The Nun. During an interview with Yahoo Movies UK, The Nun director Corin Hardy didn't hold back when it came to Pachir's coffin scene. He noted that Bashir hated the confined space, but he commended the actor for his willingness to continue to re-enter the coffin as filming required. If those screams seemed a little too realistic, though, now you know why. Bashir told ComicBook.com about the experience, saying, It's not fun to fall into a coffin and be there. I'm comfortable with small spaces, but that's not a good thing. Don't try that at home, kids. Meanwhile, Farmiga had her own fright with enclosed spaces. The actor recalled that during one scene, she had to hang out in a dark closet until cameras started rolling. Her isolation from the rest of the crew made her uncomfortable, so she had to request some company to stay calm during the shoot. She said, I was terrified because for a good probably a minute, minute and a half, I'm alone. It's pitch black. I'm waiting for them to call action. I asked for them to send someone to sit with me because I was a little too scared. There's just something about The Conjuring franchise that opens up its actors to a world of real-life paranormal scares. More often than not, horror films feature child actors, which constantly leads to a whole new generation of mildly traumatized horror movie alums. McKenna Grace was only 13 when she filmed Annabelle Comes Home, which is considerably younger than the franchise's target demographic of R-rated moviegoers. Despite that, Grace was fine with most of her scary scenes. It wasn't until the horror seeped into reality that it really left a mark, literally. During an interview with The Wrap, Grace recalled a particularly disturbing moment during filming. She explained, When all of us were on set together for the first time, the lights went out and we were all freaking out and asking, Annabelle, are you there? Then the lights turned back on and my nose was bleeding so heavily. Strangely enough, the issue went away immediately after she left the room. Between malfunctioning lights, creepy shadows, and a broken rosary, Grace's weird experiences would be enough to traumatize an adult, let alone a young teen. To make matters worse, every time Grace tried to take photos of the Annabelle doll, it came out black. Most fans didn't quite know what to expect when they walked into the theater to watch Barbarian and were left shocked by what they saw. Fans weren't alone in being surprised by the film, however. Actor Justin Long was right there with them. In fact, Long was so wigged out by the script that he needed to take breaks from reading it at points. Unfortunately, he wasn't exactly in a reassuring environment at the time. It's typically not a great idea to consume horror media, let alone the script for Barbarian, when you're hanging out in an RV in the middle of nowhere. And according to an interview with the AV Club, Long had to learn that lesson the hard way. He told the outlet that he actually read the script while staying in a Louisiana RV park, a setting that made him extremely uncomfortable. Although Long admitted to being afraid of the dark, the cocktail of reading a terrifying script in such an isolated and exposed environment would be enough to freak anyone out. Some of the most captivating and creepy moments of horror come from the unknown. Barbarian certainly hones in on that concept, and it sounds like Long's outdoorsy digs felt just as bizarre as the movie's Airbnb. Plenty of horror actors experience trauma from the intensity of their roles and the less than ideal physical and mental conditions they're subjected to. Yet sometimes a movie can be so rough that it causes PTSD. Hereditary actor Alex Wolf told Vice that his role in the movie made him feel so horrible it caused him memory loss. He explained, it's hard to describe eloquently, it's just a feeling. I don't think you can go through something like this and not have some sort of PTSD afterwards. 
You don't feel that? What? Feel what? Like, you don't feel the air flexing? Wolf told the outlet that he subjected himself to some pretty intense emotional turmoil to get into the right headspace to play the traumatized teenager. However, it wasn't until he started unpacking that experience that he realized he'd blocked out parts of the trying process. He recalled to Vice, When I started talking about it, all these flashes with all this disturbing sh** I went through sort of came back in the flood. It kept me up at night to where I got into the habit of emotional masochism at that point of just trying to take in every negative feeling I could draw from. Wolf's experience is yet another example of an actor diving so deep into their role that it irrevocably changes them. In many ways, it's a strong indicator that Hollywood needs an overhaul of how films and TV shows handle these roles. Method acting might wield some incredible performances, but it can also be pretty dangerous for the actors. Both physically and mentally, fully immersing oneself in a character can result in some pretty dire consequences, particularly in the horror genre. For example, Florence Pugh's performance in Midsummer is incredible, but it came at a cost. Some actors stand by the intensity of their method acting and the results it produces, but Pew expressed some regret over her acting choices. The actor spoke to the Off Menu podcast about the intensity of her role, saying, I would just be imagining the worst things because each day the content would be getting more weird and harder to do. On the subject of her character's trauma, Pew explained that she deliberately tried to put herself in miserable situations to try to ascertain a sensation of grief. She admitted that she even felt actively guilty about the experiences both her and her character had to undergo to make the film. Pew added, I was putting things in my head that were just getting worse and more bleak. I think by the end, I had probably, most definitely, abused my own self in order to get that performance. There's no denying that Pew's controversial approach to her character created a powerful performance, but no role is worth such a dangerous degree of personal immersion. Sadly, not all actors make it through their traumatic horror experiences. The 1994 film The Crow fits into multiple genres, but it certainly has horror undertones. Brandon Lee starred in the cult classic, but sadly never got to see the film's success, as he died due to an accidental gunshot during the final weeks of filming. A piece of a dummy round had been caught in the barrel of the prop gun Michael Massey's character fired on Lee's. The fragment acted like a bullet when the blank was fired. Lee's death is a sobering reminder of what can happen when a film doesn't employ proper safety protocols. Massey was so distraught over Lee's death that he quit acting for a year, and he told Extra in 2005 that the accident forever changed his approach to filmmaking. Since then, I am very conscious of the dangers of making a movie, and, and it is a dangerous proposition. In the same interview, he said that he wanted to make sure a mishap like that never happens again, and that he relied on the support of his family and friends to slowly work through the trauma caused by the event. While his career went on to include memorable roles in numerous films and TV shows, after his death in 2016, many of Massey's obituaries prominently focused on his tragic association with The Crow and Brandon Lee. Not all weird horror movie stories occur on set. When it comes to the paranormal, all bets are off, especially when the film in question is fictionalizing real folklore. When Patricia Velasquez scored a lead role in The Curse of La Llorona, an offshoot to The Conjuring franchise, she opted to take the method approach to get into character. Unfortunately, this strategy came with some creepy consequences. The tale of La Llorona was all too familiar to the actor, who grew up with the threat of the spirit looming over children who behaved poorly. Well, you see, they call it a legend, a folk tale, but for us Latinos, it's a, she's, a, she's real. It seems that filming a movie about the spirit reignited her childhood fear. Velasquez told Refinery29 that she often sensed someone being on set. Velasquez shared a pre-filming prayer ritual that she does before bed to get into her character's heads in which she asks her inner self to reveal that character's struggle. After she went to sleep one night, Velasquez heard what she described as a mashup between a scream and a howl and a cry. Her daughter heard the disturbance as well, and in Velasquez's haste to get to her daughter's room, she sustained an injury. The actor is convinced that she had a run-in with the real La Llorona, and that the fear she felt for her daughter helped her connect with the entity and her character. Velasquez recalled, It was so scary, but at the same time, I was like, oh, I get it now, I understand her pain, and I understand her desperation. Annabelle Strikes Again The doll has amassed quite a few names on the list of actors she's traumatized, but it's not just the kids who aren't all right. It's fascinating that though the Annabelle doll bears no resemblance to the actual doll she's based on, she still inspires fear and is often associated with weird, inexplicable activity. In the Annabelle origin story Annabelle Creation, actor Miranda Otto wanted absolutely no part in dealing with the doll. She told Cinemovie that the doll's presence was so palpable and creepy that she has to do rehearsals without it in the room. Whether you call it brilliant prop design work or something more sinister, Annabelle has a way of getting under people's skin. While Anthony LaPaglia wasn't necessarily freaked out by the doll, she still got her claws into him in another way. 
He explained the Cinemovie, For me it depended on the light, and certain light it looked pretty benign to me. Then I'd walk in and it would be a different light and different shadow on the face, and suddenly the eyes would be on fire. Some of the film's younger stars were also put off by the doll. Lulu Wilson was on the same page as La Paglia regarding Annabelle's eyes, and Talitha Bateman wasn't particularly fond of Annabelle's dilapidated form. 